Hi, and welcome to Vending Emacs episode 6. In this episode, we'll be talking about overlays. Before we do that, a little chat about the channel itself. Have you been enjoying the Vending Emacs series? This is now my sixth video. I like to maybe grow the channel a bit. Hopefully, it can give Emacs a bit of visibility. Maybe we can grow the Emacs community a tiny bit. Either way, I'm going to need your help, so please subscribe to my channel like this video, and of course, tell your friends. So what are we doing or looking at today? We're looking at overlays. Now, overlays themselves are a mechanism of source you can use to decorate the text in your Emacs buffers. You can use them to change the text properties like color, weight, underline, highlight, and a whole bunch of other things. You can use overlays to hide parts of the text. You can use them to add or replace text with other text or even images. Best thing about it is that um, the content in your buffer remains untouched. You can think of overlays as a transparent sticker. You stick the sticker on your buffer and then you can decorate everything that's behind the sticker. Now, when you peel the sticker back off, then all of that kind of uh, decoration goes away with it. So as a goal for this video, we'll be having a little bit of fun with overlays. How are we going to do that? We are going to be applying <clears throat> and removing overlays. Now, overlays themselves are a uh, built-in Emacs feature, so it will be fairly straightforward to do. In fact, we are going to be taking this hello world text here and apply some overlays to it. Before we do that, though, um, let's have a look here at the, um, at the main function uh, make overlay. The make overlay function uh, needs the start and the end location of the text that it's going to be applying the overlay to. Uh, in our case, it's going to be the hello world um, text. Now I could go ahead and figure out the, the location, uh, the beginning and the end uh, location of the hello world um, text and just uh, uh, stick it in the uh, make overlay function. But instead, I'm going to be using the uh, search forward function here that uh, returns the start and the end for us. So I can just uh, feed that over to the make overlay function. Now, just creating the overlay doesn't do a whole lot for us in terms of uh, changing uh, the looks of the text. Um, so to do that, we actually have to apply some properties to the overlay. So uh, as a first example here, we'll take the uh, overlay and use the overlay put function to change the face of our uh, hello world text. In this case, we'll be adding a yellow box around the hello world text. And I'll just go ahead and evaluate this bit of code. And you can see that we now have a yellow box around the hello world um, text. Now, at this point is a good time to maybe uh, talk about the overlay put, um, this overlay put a uh, bit of code here. What we're doing is effectively just um, setting a property as a tag or a label of sorts. Uh, it can be anything you want here uh, as either key or value, just as long as you use them later on to identify your own overlays so you can remove them. This basically enables you to kind of categorize um, overlays such that um, you don't mess around with the overlays uh, that belong to a different uh, functionality or mode. So in our case, um, having said all of that, um, I will show you um, what we can do once we have set that tag. Let me just hide this. Uh, and you can see now that if we invoke the remove overlays uh, function, we can go ahead and just remove the overlay that we had just added. And you see that the um, that the yellow box is now gone. I'm going to go ahead and copy this uh, snippet because we're going to use it a whole bunch of times. Um, next in line here that we can try out as a as a way to modify or the dis modify the display of the text is by just adding an underline to the text itself we e evaluate the, the snippet and you see that the um, hello world text is now uh, uh, underlined i'm going to go ahead and remove the overlays via the eval um, uh, by a mini buffer here so it's just a little bit quicker and um, let's just keep moving down the list so we can try different things. Um, for example, highlighting. The next two are quite neat. Um, they enable you to display um, additional text before and after the string. So if I go ahead and evaluate this, you see that we get um, 
some text, uh, some icons added before and after the hello world uh, text. Now, if I actually, let's go ahead and do it. If I, you know, just to prove to you that it doesn't actually modify the text, I've just selected the text, I copy it. If I paste it, uh, I'm showing you that it actually just paste uh, the original text rather than the one that is displayed uh, by the overlay. So let's see, um, next down uh, we have display. Um, this one is quite neat. We can basically use it to display a different kind of text um, in place of our hello world. Let me just go ahead and remove the overlay. Uh, and now I can go ahead and evaluate this again. And you can see that it now shows how the planet instead of hello world. We'll remove the overlay. And now um, the next one down is the invisible uh, property. Now, if we set this one to true, um, you can see that the hello world kind of disappears. Um, as we know now, it doesn't actually delete the text. It's just hiding it, um, hiding its display. Um, another neat one here is the um, this help echo. Uh, if I were to set this and I hover over this text, you will see at the bottom of the screen uh, that the yay overlay text actually is display. Similarly, if we set the mouse face and I hover over the text itself, I just happen to use the success um, Oh, uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Oh, yes. Um, uh, I, I use the success uh, phase uh, just to make sure that uh, the, the, the text kind of turns green. So um, those are just uh, some examples of, uh, of things that you can do to change the how the text is displayed. Um, at this point, I should probably mention this last one here. Um, uh, the evaporate property here, what that does is that if the hello world text was to be uh, actually deleted from the buffer, then any overlay that was associated with, um, with that particular um, uh, location basically evaporates or deletes itself. So those are just some examples. You can go and look up um, all the different kind of uh, text properties that you can set on text. They can also typically be set on overlays as well. And so with that in mind, uh, we can move on to um, the next bit, which is um, I've used some overlays as some experiments to kind of, um, I don't know, to, to decorate uh, my Emacs text buffers. We can start with maybe um, the media one. So I'm just going to open here a media or MP3 directory. It has a handful of MP3s. So I wrote this little um, minor mode uh, in um, Ready Player. Uh, so I'll go ahead and enable it now. So it's a direct mode. And what you can see here is that um, basically I um, delegate to FFmpeg to give me the metadata of each one of these mp3 files and then I go ahead and display it uh, as an overlay. So you can see here that uh, the artist and the album name have been um, displayed in the um, Dirt buffer. If I turn the Dirt mode, um, minor mode um, off that I added, that I created, then you can see that the overlays are removed as well. Redacting, um, I, uh, I wrote this little uh, function that effectively uses um, um, regular expressions to redact a buffer. So let's pretend here that we want to, that we were about to present and before the presentation, we want to make sure that the identity of these people uh, remains uh, private. So to do that, um, I wrote this uh, redact function. Uh, that if I give it a regular expression, in this case is a handful of names that I don't want uh, displayed in the buffer, then it goes ahead and hides them for me. Um, so this is quite neat if you need to present and want to make sure that some things in the buffer remain um, private. I'll go ahead and toggle this and you can see that uh, the text, of course, was never uh, modified, but actually just covered uh, with uh, some X's. Links, this one is quite neat. Um, 
while I haven't released any kind of e-list for this, uh, it's, it's just a, an experiment at this point. I have actually just pushed recently the little um, command line utility that I wrote to actually generate um, some link previews. So with that in mind, I'll just go ahead and uh, enable this uh, org link preview experiment. This doesn't actually exist. I haven't pushed it anywhere. Um, but anyway, you can see that after enabling it, um, the uh, the links turn into, um, they actually have fetched the metadata of uh, each one of those links and render the thumbnails for each one of those um, links. Now, the mode also has a different way of displaying um, your, um, your preview. So I'll just go ahead and enable that now. And you can see now that uh, they are effectively rendered um, these bigger thumbnails that we can um, kind of display in our in our text buffers. So um, that's really it for today. Um, I thought that maybe overlays are a little bit uh, maybe lesser known to some folks. I find them super versatile to kind of um, decorate uh, buffers. Uh, what do you think of overlays? What would you do with them? Have you enjoyed this video? Please leave me a comment. So again, that's it. Um, by the way, coincidentally, the graphics that you see in this uh, presentation, and often I've, I've um, been asked by some folks, hey, how are you getting the looks um, of those org files to present like, like you do? And the answer to that is overlays. So anyway, um, that's it for today. Um, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the uh, channel, and of course, leave me some comments. I always enjoy them. Uh, so thank you.